South Africa. The country is facing its worst ever power crisis as it heads into a bitter southern hemisphere winter with daily blackouts of up to 10 hours a day and fears it could lead to major civil unrest. Back in 2002, South Africa's GDP was only $129 billion, which in 2022 boomed to $405 billion US. Such economic growth was predicted by Goldman Sachs when a report on BRIC was published. Don't forget that this report came a decade before the actual BRICS was founded. But now, everything seems to be upside down in South Africa. The worst energy crisis is looming where no day passes without electricity disruption. And it's expected to double by the end of the year. So the, the, the extent of load shedding is, is growing, worsening, and it, it is becoming a permanent fixture in South African life. The situation is so unfortunate that people are advised to bury their deceased ones within four days to prevent decomposition due to lack of cooling. The economy is in tatters as all forecasts are downward and the GDP is destined to shrink. Corruption has gotten into the roots of every institution, ensuring that the economic crisis will outlast the country. All this has shown the world what a civil war will look like in South Africa as a glance was given back in 2022. So what lies ahead of South Africa, and has it become a failed state? In this video, we'll completely change how you think about South Africa as an emerging economy by explaining the deep crises it is in. Let's get started. Corruption, political instability, leading to crises. Now suspend the proceedings. I Corruption has seeped into the foundation of South Africa's government, regardless of which president is in office. Back in 2009, Jacob Zuma became the president and took the country further down. Since then, South Africa has been going through tough times. Wages have been stagnant, and poverty has gripped almost half of the population. The national debt has shot up, and income inequality has worsened, making South Africa the most unequal country in the world as per the World Bank. It turns out that Jacob Zuma did things that doomed South Africa. This was because he's a greater master at corruption than his predecessors. His administration brought political instability, and corruption allegations were frequent. Zuma would reshuffle key positions for personal gains. This misuse of state institutions eroded public trust in the government, setting the stage for challenges ahead. Amid this turmoil, Cyril Ramaphosa, the incumbent president of South Africa, seized an opportunity to rise to power, signaling the end of Zuma's era, but also adding to the nation's struggles. The consequences of political instability were far-reaching, leading to South Africa's credit rating downgrade, which made accessing international loans and raising capital more challenging. The intertwining of politics and falling economic growth presented a significant challenge for the country. Corruption deterred investments and forced businesses to pay bribes for government contracts, further undermining public trust. A striking example of corruption was evident in the gross misuse of state funds by former President Jacob Zuma. Instead of using the funds to benefit the people, extravagant renovations were made to his rural home for personal gain. Various indicators displayed the country's economic decline, with GDP growth, inflation, and unemployment rates painting a bleak picture. South Africa struggled for years, with GDP growth consistently below 2% since 2014. Rising inflation resulted in reduced disposable income, leading to food insecurity among the population. Corruption and mismanagement within the government has hastened the economic decline, benefiting those in power while leading to the downfall of state-owned enterprises like ESCOM and South African Airways. The energy crisis. Nine hours, 10 hours of no electricity as it rotates around the country. It's really very devastating to the country to have um, electricity turned off. We are therefore declaring a national state of disaster to respond to the electricity crisis and its effect. South Africa is currently facing its most severe energy crisis in over three decades, and it's taking a toll on the nation's economy and political stability. The country witnessed a staggering increase in blackouts in 2022, more than double the previous years. According to the BBC, there's a power outage lasting over 16 hours every day in South Africa. The root of the energy crisis lies in the mismanagement of ESCOM, the state-owned energy provider responsible for nearly 90% of the country's electricity supply. The lack of investment in new power plants and infrastructure has put ESCOM in a precarious position. 
The delayed completion and cost overruns of coal-fired power plants at Medupi and Kusil further burdened ESCOM's financial situation. Former ESCOM head André de Reuter recently exposed the agency's loss of over $50 million per month due to corruption within the ruling African National Congress Party. You see, corruption is at the back of every crisis. To cope with the crisis, some regions are paying independent households and businesses for additional energy, while Cape Town is taking strides towards achieving energy independence from ESCOM. Now, it seems like the energy crisis is beyond repair and poses an existential threat to the country's development. Though the South African government revoked the state of disaster declared due to the energy crisis in February 2023, but the situation still remains precarious. The continuous blackouts, primarily from old coal-operated power plants, are expected to have a devastating impact on the economy. This comes at a time when South Africa is already grappling with an unemployment rate of 33%, and a projected plummet of GDP growth to 1.2% this year. Now, if you're enjoying this video, please give it a like and subscribe to our channel. Lobbyists love status quo. Policymakers and the administration in South Africa know reforms are essential. They know that they have to find alternatives to solve the energy crisis. However, efforts to improve the energy infrastructure have encountered obstacles, particularly within the ANC. That's because some members with ties to the coal industry are reluctant to support the development of solar and clean energy sources, hindering progress. Even energy ministers have obstructed private companies from contributing to the power supply. The energy crisis is just one aspect of a larger corruption scandal known as state capture, which has become one of the country's most significant corruption investigations in years. Former President Jacob Zuma and his associates have been implicated in embezzling state funds that could have been used to enhance health care and energy infrastructure. Civil War For an average South African, tracing the real root of all problems is difficult. South Africa has become a country where corruption is the norm and bribing is the official language. Outlaws are powerful and hence, people choose to follow the path of corruption. This takes the country down to an economic fall, bringing an energy crisis. And when people in South Africa see and understand that, they come out violently. These crises have already ignited unrest, with protests and riots breaking out in different parts of the country. Citizens have voiced their frustration over the disruptions caused by the blackouts, affecting trade, education, and healthcare. An example of civil unrest was seen in July 2021 people came out of their homes and unleashed chaos and violence in places like KwaZulu-Natal and parts of KwaZulu-Natal. Businesses, shops and warehouses fell victim to destruction, looting, and even fires during the eight-day turmoil. The economic toll of this violence amounted to a staggering $3.4 billion, marking the worst outbreak of violence since the country's transition to democracy in 1994. That anarchy demonstrated how swiftly unrest can spread across South Africa. You should know that the majority of South Africans are suffering. They're poverty-stricken. Yet, there is no remedy in sight for the troubles. A failed state It's a real concern whether South Africa is on the path to becoming a failed state. The government seems to be struggling to handle the basics. The African National Congress, who's been in charge for a decade, has not been able to spur economic growth, leaving South Africans doubtful about their ability to bring positive changes. Fikile Mbulula, a member of the ruling African National Congress, already said that South Africa could become a failed state. This explains what lies ahead. The government, leaders, and policymakers are pessimistic, and when this happens, threats to the state's existence emerge. Fixing the electricity crisis requires an additional 6,000 megawatts of capacity, a huge challenge that even a well-functioning government would take years to sort out. But given the ANC's shaky track record and the lack of trust from the public, the next election in 2024 becomes critical. If the ANC doesn't get an outright majority, they might form a coalition with either the Democratic Alliance or the Economic Freedom Fighters. While a moderate coalition offers some hope, Teaming up with the populist economic freedom fighters could spell disaster, possibly pushing South Africa toward the brink of collapse. Unless a competitive president comes into office and gets a cooperative administration, which is free from lobbyists, South Africa's path is delicate, leading to a collapse. 
In 2022, South Africa's GDP grew by a mere 2.04%, while in 2023, the growth is expected to be only 0.1%, which explains everything. But what do you think about South Africa's future? Let us know in the comments below. And if you like this video, give it a like and subscribe for more. If you want to know more about geopolitics, you can check out more videos on our channel.